This week on At Your Leisure, Chad and I are hitting the trails with the Canyon Country 4x4 Club as we get in the Jeep and head back to beautiful Kane County. Then, in light of all the things that you may have missed on our New Year's show, we're going to go back for an in-depth look at the Wikiup Trail in Green River. Finally, our friends from Blue Ribbon Coalition are back to show us how closing trails won't just affect the motorized community, but they'll also help you protect the trails you love. It's all heading your way now. At Your Leisure is next. Our goal is to bring you 50 trails in 50 weeks. Welcome to At Your Leisure, everybody. I'm Rhea Rossi Booth. And I'm Chad Booth, and we are with the Canyon Country 4x4 Club, and we are kicking off our goal to really, really celebrate the 50th anniversary of the OHV program here in the state of Utah. And we're starting down here in a place called Seaman Wash. That's the name of the trail, and our base camp is Kanab. Oh, what a beautiful county. Kane County, I tell you, I every time I come here, I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good thing for as, you. <laughs> as well you should. The Seaman Wash is one of the less traveled trails here in Kane County. And there are some spectacular things that you are about to experience. The Seaman Wash is one of the lesser known trails in uh, Kane County, out of Kanab. It's uh, roughly 15 miles east of Kanab. It's not highly technical, it's just interesting fun. It's twisty, tur turny up and down. There's a spring with a little water crossing. Past that there's some rocks. Past that there's a climb. Past that there's some rocks. Past that there's a sand climb that takes you up the top of Seaman. And that can be really tough in the summertime. After we get to the top of Seaman, we'll go across uh, the Nephi pasture area, which is a more prominent road in Kane County. From there, we'll be going to uh, Inchworm Arch, which you have to do a short hike to. It's a little bit steep, but not bad. Well worth seeing. Inchworm Arch is, is quite spectacular. We'll go back to Nephi Pasture Road, head out towards Johnson Canyon. Uh, there's some petroglyphs that are well worth stopping at. Whether we have time today or not is questionable. Everybody should probably make a uh, quick stop at the old movie set for Gunsmoke, and, which is on private property, but if you treat that with respect, you can enjoy the old buildings that they used on the TV show. And then we'll head back to 89, head back to Kanab, and that'll be the end of our trip. Get this four-wheel drive to kick in, baby. Woohoo! <laughs> hey! Oh my gosh! I am telling you, I am so glad that Chad got this rattle trap working. <laughs> oh, come on, don't pick on our at your leisure Jeep. I love Cherokees. It, it, this, this thing just has given me so many fits. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it today. Well, you know, there's always a complaint department, okay? <laughs> And, I'm the president. And, I'm the chairman of the board And of that. we really pay attention when they're our viewers. We had a lot of people say, gosh, on your New Year's show, we really wanted to see more of the trail in the San Rafael. So, by popular demand, we're going to go back and take a detailed look at all the things you missed. See ya. Utah is known for its incredible desert landscapes, many of which are featured in national parks. But national parks have two notable drawbacks, limited off-roading and large crowds. So the question stands, where does one go to experience small crowds, off-roading, and incredible desert landscapes? Off-road enthusiast Ed Helmick knows exactly where, and it's all in his book, San Rafael Swell Off-Road. One of the things I like about this area is it's not crowded. When I was in high school, I went back in the Canyonlands area before it was National Park, quote, uh, and it has increasingly got popular with a lot more restrictions. I understand why the restrictions are there because of the population pressure. But that's kind of what drove us to this area. It's uh, still undeveloped, uncrowded, 
and uh, has uh, the romance of adventure. What's nice about the San Rafael that's not that well known, there's all kinds of, of, uh, of things to see that are just absolutely world class. And we just fell in love with this place. And we come every year. Uh, we introduce this place to our Jeep club and they've been coming every year. And there's so many different trails. It's true the Swell offers great opportunities for taking vehicles off-road, and it also features an incredible variety in both terrain and sights to behold. You can go into area that's, uh, that has these huge cliffs, gigantic cliffs. You can go into areas that have these beautiful plateaus like we've been on today. Uh, you can go uh, and, and see all types of, of rock formations. Uh, you can go into areas that uh, have some deep gulches. There's a uh, a fantastic uh, pictograph known as the head of Sinbad. Um, it's been featured in National Geographic. It just gives you a lot of options on uh, how much day you have and uh, where you want to go and what you want to do. And what's unique about it is a lot of these roads have been cherry stemmed into the wilderness study areas. And so it gives people a chance to be able to go into these areas and see them. And, it, and it's just, it's just world class, it's wonderful. One of the best ways to enjoy your time and make sure you don't miss a thing in the San Rafael Swell is by grabbing Ed's definitive guide, which includes maps, points of interest, and 42 different trails. Well, several years ago we came out with a book called San Rafael Swell Off-Road. The roads are, are in that book, 42 of them, destinations and the trails are rated easy, moderate, or difficult. There are only four that are difficult, so there's a lot of country that you could access uh, with a pickup uh, or a sedan, and uh, sometimes in the, well, in the book there's several that I give an easy way, and here's a more difficult way for the off-roader type person. It's, it's available. Uh, it's sold in uh, museums and bookstores in the area, and they were meant to, to help people find a way and, uh, explore this fantastic country, uh, see sites that they wouldn't otherwise know about. Exploration awaits in the San Rafael Swell, and with so many landmarks to gawk at and roads to drive on, the different combinations of adventures you can have are nearly limitless. Just make sure you take a guidebook when you go. For At Your Leisure, I'm Nick Chase. Sick of staying home? Getting outside and exploring great open spaces is now more important than ever. Spend your summer exploring Tula Valley, where there is so much so close. Plan your escape now at TulaValley.org. The Old West is still alive in Jueb County. Stories of the past are hidden in the desert mountains. From relics of mining history to places of outlaw mystery, tall tales to be discovered and buried treasure to be uncovered. Jueb, the key county of Utah. 
Hey, welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. I'm Scott Huntsman. I'm at my 2 next Automotive Center here in South Jordan, Utah. This is what's new. What's new is what's old. The 66 GMC truck. Here's a problem that we've got with this one today. We've got a suspension sag. If I take a measurement right now, my ground to wheel well opening is 26 inches. I already measured the other side at 28 inches. We've got a two inch drop driver side to passenger side. So my fix for this, two new leaf springs in the back rear suspension. We're gonna head to AAA suspension. All right, guys, I'm at AAA Spring here in Salt Lake City. These guys have all the stuff here to make these new leaf springs, which they're gonna make from scratch. I brought the truck so that they can check the specs and we agree on the ride height that we need. They do a great job here and they do custom work. So let's go on inside and let's see what they've got. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Hey everybody, this is Scott Holdaway. He's with AAA Spring. He's gonna show us around the shop and show what they do because we're gonna make some leaf springs today for this GMC truck of Rias. And uh, he's gonna do us a good job. Let's go check it out. Let's go. Okay, so when we make a leaf spring here in the shop, we start with raw steel. Right here, we take these flat bars and we'll take them over here to this table where we measure out the pieces. We use this machine to cut them down. Then we go to this punch or drill here, it depends on what we need to make the holes in the, in the leaf springs. From there, when they're ready, they'll go right here to the furnace. And today we're running the furnace to make main leaves. Uh, we're doing what we call rolling eyes. We're rolling the eyes of the main leaves. Then when we have all the pieces shaped, we bring them here to this table. Uh, we place the springs in there on their side, run the center bolt through them, put them together, and then you have a leaf spring. Scott, this is a really interesting process with all the things you guys do here for leaf springs. I mean, you make them all, yep. but I like our new ones. We've got the U-bolts, we've got all the hardware, we've got new bushings in them. This is great. I even uh, heard you're having a fire truck coming in here today we, for some leaf springs. We work on fire trucks, we work on utility trailers. If it's got a leaf spring, we can do it. That's awesome. Well, we're gonna get these back in the shop. We're gonna get them installed on Ria's truck and see how this turned out. Hey, I sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. You bet, thanks for coming by. All right, everybody. Now we got this up, we got the wheels off. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm spraying all the old hardware uh, with the penetrant. Uh, so that we loosen those nuts so that they're not so hard to get off. Okay, springs in. Now it's time for the U-bolt. Brand new, I'm gonna reuse the lower plate as well as the upper guide. So when tightening the U-bolts, you wanna make sure you do those equally, showing all equal numbers of threads on all four mounting points. Then when that's seated and just kind of hand tighten into place, then we can torque them to the 65 foot pounds uh, that's required for these U-bolts. Hey guys, we're outside with it. We're all done with this project. Now, as you can see, the whole bed of this truck has been lifted, but more importantly, our left side sag is corrected. We have two equal good springs lifted just right, two wheel drive trucks. So I expect a little bit of rake in the right of this, and we've got it perfect now. These guys did it square on. AAA Spring, great people to deal with. We here at Tunex install their products. We can put them on anything that has a leaf spring. Hey, I'm Scott Huntsman at my Tunex shop. More at your leisure in a moment. My daughter and I had just finished a run at this place called Eagle Point. It's this really cool, but kind of challenging ski resort that has a real family feel to it. She was so excited because she beat me down the run. Deja vu. I saw myself as a kid out skiing my mom. It was a big moment for me. And all of a sudden it hit me. I was making the same memories for her. Hey honey, have you seen this tire? Do you think we'll make it? Not on that thing. Don't let bad tires ruin your trip. With service stations at every location along I-15, we can get you back on the road with fast, friendly, professional service. Eagle's Landing has everything you need along the way. Even the things you didn't know you'd need. Get ready for the road at Eagle's Landing. Reason number 13 to spend the night in Duchesne County. 
experience the serenity of your own Red Rock Canyon with a private fishing retreat to Falcon's Ledge Resort, eight fishing lakes, world-class rivers, fishing guides, and plenty of room to accommodate groups of all sizes. Discover all the other reasons to spend the night in Duchesne County at uintabasin.org. Make Marysvale your hub for adventure. Nestled in the Tusher Mountains with direct access to the Bayou Trail. Explore history from Miner's Park to Butch Cassidy's Cabin while blazing trails from mountain peaks to the shores of Otter Creek. Okay, I now can see, Rhea, why they call it Inchworm Arch. Isn't it fabulous? Yes. So you have that little baby arch going yeah, that's underneath. The, that's and then the it, second part of the Inchworm, ah, yeah. This really is spectacular. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are out here with the Canyon Country 4x4 Club in beautiful Kane County, one of our favorite places to be. And we are at a place called Inchworm Arch, obviously. And, okay. Wayne was over here a few minutes ago. I tried to get him to stay under the arch, but I think he thought it was bad luck, so he didn't stay. <laughs> like a ladder. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. That's good luck standing underneath that uh, thing. I would think that's probably true. But that'll give you an idea of, of how big this arch actually is, and you can literally walk right up to it. So uh, it's just one of the many hidden treasures down here in, uh, in Kane County. Yeah, this is spectacular, really. Four by fours, side by sides, you name it. Hiking, it's got it all. Horseback riding, don't forget the horses. Oh, yes, indeedy. Yeah. You know, how do we find out about all these cool places? People always ask us that. Well, it's because we have friends in the right places, like in the clubs. So we wouldn't have known about this if it wasn't for the Canyon Country uh, Four by Four Club. Let's find out a little bit about their organization, how you can know those kinds of people. I'm a member of both the uh, uh, Canyon Country 4x4 Jeep Club and the uh, Ute As ATV Club uh, here in Kane County. A lot of members of the clubs, both clubs are like I, they're move-ins and they love the back country. They would not want to live anywhere else. The Jeep Club got started in 98. Uh, that's when I moved here. A fellow named Dave DeVoe had moved here from, I believe, West Virginia. He wanted to start a Jeep club. I missed the first meeting, but I made the second meeting. So I've been a member of the Jeep Club ever since. Richard Jessup uh, was a resident here when the Jeep Club formed. He had lived in this area all his life. He basically showed us all the neat stuff. Anybody's welcome to join the, the Jeep Club. Uh, beyond that, it's not necessary to be a member of the Jeep Club to go out with us. So if you come to the area and want to go on a Jeep ride, uh, just ask around, get a hold of me or get a hold of somebody else. We often take people out and show them our country. It never ceases to amaze me what I learn on these trips. I know, every time. Every time. I, as an example, I now learned that Anasazi celebrated Christmas. I, I, I'm incredulous. I can't I, believe it. I mean, look, there's Dancer, Prancer, <laughs> Comet, Cupid. Did I do that right? So Santa Claus was before the Anasazi. I guess that's true. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> One of the great things, really seriously, uh, about going out with the club is that you learn things you would never learn otherwise. You see things you would never see otherwise because they're the locals. They know. Right. And that's, and that's why it's so valuable. But like this panel, we would never have known it was here. Right. This is beautiful, really. And, and, and it's the fact that they, you, everyone that comes here respects this. They know it's like hundreds and thousands of years old, maybe. And you just, you just got to love it and leave it. Look, enjoy, and keep your mitts off. All right. Well, right now, we want to go to something else that we think you're going to really enjoy. And one of the best reasons to tune in to At Your Leisure are the things we find along the way. Hey, this is Ben Burr with the Blue Ribbon Coalition. Today I'm out here on the Virgin Rim Bike Trail, just above Hurricane on your way to Zion. 
Uh, as you can see, we're on this spectacular trail that has, it goes along the edges of these cliffs. Down below me is the Virgin River. Mountain biking is a sport that has exploded in popularity in recent years, especially during the COVID lockdowns. People were looking for something to do to get out of the house. Blue Ribbon Coalition is, a, is an advocacy group that fights for access for all. And mountain biking has traditionally been seen as a lower impact form of recreation. And so public land managers and others have been generally permissive of allowing mountain bike use to exist on public land. Uh, we are starting to see though, because it is growing in popularity, that it is getting more attention from decision makers. We've recently participated in a decision where there was, there's a trail in the San Rafael Swell. It's kind of like this trail. It, it skirts along the edges of some cliffs over the San Rafael River, beautiful scenery. And the BLM had made a decision to formally open and recognize this trail so they could manage it. Uh, we did find out that environmental groups appealed this decision. So in other words, there were environmental groups trying to close or prevent the BLM from designating a very popular mountain biking trail as open. And that's alarming to us because this is still, even a trail that gets that much use, is still a relatively low impact. It's hard for me to imagine why they would want to shut down a mountain biking trail because it's so popular, this sport, and because it's so low impact. So I did go do some homework on this one to find out why. And the best reason I can find is that there is a species of cactus that grows in this area of the San Rafael Swell. You don't have to have too much common sense to recognize that mountain bikers generally try to avoid cactus. In a fight between a cactus and a mountain bike, I think the cactus is gonna win. And a cactus has pretty good defense mechanisms to protect itself. I don't know that a cactus needs Sua to protect it. So Blue Ribbon Coalition is a membership-based organization, and we fight on behalf of our members for all recreation access, and that includes mountain bikers. Traditionally, we have fought for snowmobilers, we have fought for personal watercraft, we've fought for ATVs, side-by-sides, motorcycles, Jeeps, dispersed camping, and we have engaged in uh, the public comment processes on behalf of mountain biking, on behalf of e-bikes, and so the best way to join us is to become a member, and we will, we will work together. We, the more mountain bikers we get, the more work we'll be able to do. The number of amazing trails we'll build over in the coming years, it's gonna be a great time to be someone participating in this sport. Isn't it time to slow down? To enjoy the view. To get some space. And to social distance. There's no better place to be than on the trails. Visit TooilaCountyTrails.com for your next adventure. Coming down into the little valley and stuff, you can look over the whole thing. For me, I can just feel the, the stress just kind of melt away. There's so many trails to go up on and, and explore. The desert, and then you've got the lake, you got the mountains. It's just a little bit of everything. It's a little piece of paradise out here. Pretty much anybody that I've brought up here, they will ask, can we come back? At Stedman's Recreation, trucks are arriving daily with back-ordered side-by-sides, ATVs, and dirt bikes. Let Stedman's Recreation help get you outside so you can explore and create memories to last a lifetime. Call or stop by Stedman's to hold your side-by-side, -side, ATV, or dirt bike with a small deposit. Yamaha, Honda, 
Polaris and Beta. Plus, Stedman's has a full service department and Honda power equipment. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. You may think it's 300 miles out here, but remember, it's only 30 miles back. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. Okay, so today we have discovered, let's yes. do our checklist. Checklist. We have done Siemens Wash. Yes. We have done Inchworm Arch. Yeah. And Johnson's Canyon. I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. What a great show. <laughs> Okay, no comment. Anyway, uh, we are we are here at the movie set, the famed movie set here in Johnson Canyon. There have been several movies made here. So it's Hollywood. Call, it's called the Gunsmoke Town. L literally, like if you know Gunsmoke, that we like if you're like our age, right? Right. Now you look at you look at the old building that used yeah. to be standing up there. You say, oh yeah, that's the step. Those are the stairs that Doc used to come and down. And Miss Kitty like used that. to be in there. Right. All that good stuff. Right. So. Uh, it is no more. I mean, there are just some remnants of it. It was pretty much intact till about, oh, six, seven years ago, and then one snowstorm just wiped it out. Yeah, it's privately owned now, but you could still go over there and, like, be nice and look at it and leave, right? Right, right. Stay on this side of the fence and enjoy right. it from a distance. Anyway, uh, we've had a great time today. This is just one of many trails. There'll be many more. Let's find out what's on the agenda next week for At Your Leisure. Next week, Kevin and Gina are back to take you out for a fun-filled day at Fish Lake as they catch a glimpse of some unusual man-made rock formations. Then, Steve Human continues his report from Maui for a one-of-a-kind Jeep tour as he shows off the road to Hana. Finally, Scott Huntsman has taken us down to Hurricane, Utah for another great trail ride as he shows off the 2021 Winter 4x4 Jamboree. Now let's take a look at the contest winner. This week's contest winner was submitted to us on Facebook by Deanna Lee. Congratulations, Deanna. It looks like you're the lucky winner of a $400 gift certificate to Rifab. Rifab offers the best custom metal fabrications for your rig. Visit rifab.com for more details. And it looks like you're also going to win a bonus $100 gas and gift card from the folks at Eagles Landing, which is the best place to fuel up on your next adventure. Be sure to call us on Monday at 801-947-8888 to claim your prizes. Well, let's take a minute to talk about our base camp for this week. It's Kanab, Utah, and this is a historic town. And what you are going to want to be sure to check out while you're here is Movie Town. <laughs> there are a lot of Westerns made here. They've got museums. They've got the Perry Lodge where all the stars used to stay, but it's a great base camp. There are, there are a handful of really good campgrounds in town. This town offers it all. I mean, you really can get just the best of everything here. I'm, I'm real fond of Escobars. I yeah. like their mix. It's a fun it's place. Authentic. And their tourism, um, their tourism board is fantastic here. That's right. Just around the corners, the, the tourism office for Kane County, and they've got maps of all the stuff we've done. Yeah. They can help you, uh, point you in any direction you want. This is a place you can spend three days or you can spend the whole week and you won't run out of things to do. For sure. So just remember, there's adventure around every bend. Just got to get out there and create your own adventure. At, At your, your leisure. leisure. We'll see you next time. Let's go see what's open.